Welcome to episode two of the Hip Hop Heads interview series and podcast. Sean Gavin, today I'm here with former college basketball player, former janitor, and now full-time artist, Dax. Thank you for welcoming me in your crib. Man, my love. Um, I was very excited for the second podcast interview, um, also because I'm a fan of your music over the last year or so, watching you grow as an artist and <coughs> how you've been developing. And third, me being a former college athlete and your basketball background. Um, so let's take it back to... Uh, your days in Canada, born and raised there. What was born early life like with Nigerian parents who came over here? So Nigerian parents, a lot of people know, super strict. You know, but my parents were sort of lenient. They were sort of just like, um, you know, whatever you do, make sure you just do it with your heart. So, you know, they weren't really into the whole basketball thing. But once they saw that, like, you know, this nigga's not playing around. Like, he does this, like, mm. full time, all day, every day, three practices, workouts, like, shooting, all that stuff. They're like, okay, well, if it's going to pay for school, do it. So I spent my first 10 years, I say, I, I got serious with hoop. Seventh, I remember being in seventh grade and I was like, yo, okay, I'm gonna be a basketball player. Mm -hmm. like I remember telling my mom, like, I'm gonna be a basketball player. Mm -hmm. So she signed me up. I played in my first organized team, Gloucester Wolverines. And then the next like 10 years up until like just last. Uh, Back in December? December was when I graduated, but my last like game was like oh, the, the May before because I did I did a half semester to like finish out school. So from that was like ten, a ten year span down near thirteen to twenty three was just like strict basketball, like you know, crazy. So it was a crazy story for me coming out to the U.S. too. Um, I remember, I, so I came out. I got out to the U.S. because I met a dude at a bus stop. Mm -hmm. So like these people, they brought like a school to Canada, and it was a fake school. Like really? from the Bahamas, they they came into Canada saying, "Oh, we're we're just here to for a tournament," and they never left. And your parents <laughs> trusted these people. No, so I so this is this because I was trying to go to prep school, okay. like in America, and I was like, "Okay, if I go to prep school, then I can go D one, but I got to get out of Canada." You wanted to do prep school because you didn't have the offers. Right I didn't out have of? any offers. Okay, right. So even even any divisions. No, you, you were just Canadian to schools. Play division one. I had Canadian school offers out the ass. I was like one of the best Canadian players uh -huh. in the country. But I was like, no, but I want to play in the states. Mm -hmm. But I had like no offers. Because basketball obviously is a lot better here. Than yeah, and there was you. a fallout with a with the big time coach out there that fucked me in terms of AU and all that stuff. That's so, nice. um, me to do that at a bus stop my senior year, close to the end. Uh, name's Ray Evans. Uh, so they made like a fake school. We ended up like filming uh, the game that we played their fake school on an iPad, and yeah. then we sent that to Coach Kyle. He saw it, and I flew out, tried out. And then, like, I remember not missing a shot in the trial, and then they gave me, like, a full scholarship to go there. This is for the there. prep school. This is for the prep school. Then the prep school took me to JUCO. Then I went from JUCO to D1 at the University of Montana. Then um, coaching change. This is, like, the short, shortest version. Coaching change happened. Didn't work out. Got hurt a little bit, too, with my lower back. Mm -hmm. At the end of the season, they're like, ah, we don't want you to come back. Then That's the crazy back. thing, how that can happen. Like, yeah. if, if you and the coach <laughs> don't get along, like, oh, you know yeah. how many athletes probably didn't pan out because of, it's the school the they went to or, or the coach didn't work yeah. out and stuff like it's, that. It's all the coach. There's even like a, co a coach that makes or breaks a player. It really does. Their college career. So it's like, that's what, it's so important to choose a good coach. And they give players confidence. You know what I mean? Like huh. Niggas who can't shoot. Yeah. The coach tells you you can shoot. <laughs> you can you're going to start making shots. Yeah. You know, so. And it, it's tough being able to, um, you know, figure that out until you actually get there. Because of course, when you, you know, go for the visit and everything, it's all oh, buddy, 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 you know, we buddy. want you. Buddy, buddy. Just like labels. Shit, you never know if a label will show up exactly. or not. When you, when you show up, <laughs> it's buddy, buddy. Yep, exactly. Okay, so uh, Montana didn't work. Did, you didn't play at all there? You just kind of... I played. I remember like, uh, just I got, I was not getting Yourself. what I should have deserved. It was like, it was like, I mean, the story's crazy. Remember, so I got hurt. I was killing then got hurt right before the first practice of the year. Like, oh, uh, pulled a muscle in my lower back. And it was like, I couldn't move, but like to them, I looked okay. But I'm no. like, yo, my lower back, like, I can't, I can't <laughs> function. Yeah, I can't bend over, but I'm walking about. normals. They're like, oh, this nigga's lying. Yeah. So now I, like, I end up coming back right before the season starts and just, you know, the lines were messed up. They wouldn't play me, all this stuff like that, but. And then your whole mindset, you know, I'm sure you were down on yourself during that. Uh, no, my mindset was no, good. I was just good. like, I was just like, like, cause I work really hard. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, my whole mindset is like, man, fuck these people. I'm gonna keep working. But I'm thinking like, I'm going to crack the lineup. Like sometimes I remember one time everyone got injured. The starting five got injured. We had like seven players in a game. Nigga barely played with seven players versus yeah. South Dakota. Jeez. I was like, bro, this guy just doesn't like me. 
So you it's think crazy. it was just a bad relationship? Oh yeah, it was a bad, bad relationship. So then after that, you, after Montana, you went to Newman? Yeah, is I went to Newman was? back in. That's so I went back to Wichita, Kansas, which is where I went to prep school. Okay, so, so you when went I was prep school to Montana back no, I went from prep school to junior college in Casper, Wyoming, to University wow. of Montana, then back to Kansas. Because when I, when I left Kansas, so when I left Kansas for prep school, I tried out. I went to uh, Newman University. They called me to like come like to visit and try uh-huh. out. And I remember I was like to myself, yo, if I don't kill these D2 niggas, something's I'm, wrong. I, yeah, something's wrong. <laughs> so I was, I was like, if I, don't, if I don't kill this trial, I'm signing a Newman today. That's what I told Coach Kyle. Uh-huh. Like, if I don't kill this trial, I'm signing a Newman today. Because if I can't kill these D2 dudes, then I should not be playing D1. Uh-huh. I don't give it, even just one pickup game. Yeah. So I remember going to that Newman, that Newman trial, bro, I didn't miss a shot. Mm-hmm. I didn't miss one shot. That's like, good. swear yeah. to God, didn't miss a shot. And that's when I was like, man, I got to go Juco and try this D1 thing. Mm-hmm. So I went Juco. Uh, Juco, coach loved me. Boom, ended up going D1. And then I was like, wow, this is great. And then just didn't work out at D1. It's good you had something to fall back on, you yeah. know? Because at, at Newman, he was like, if D1 doesn't ever work out, you can always come back here. Mm-hmm. So as soon as D1 didn't work out, he called me. And at that point, you were a, were you sophomore junior when you at montana to- i was a sophomore you're a sophomore so when you came to newman were you labeled as a i was a junior junior yeah junior so how how'd that all start how'd you start to fit in with them and oh at first at first it was, it was cool i had a little thought like there was a misunderstanding between me and the coach because i'm like a on the basketball court like when i'm when i'm going hard i'm a heavy personality what i'm like person? I'm, I'm like loud you know you screaming and shouting yeah you know? you know diving and stuff like that and like if you don't know me it could like be took in the wrong way course you know what i mean so but eventually like i ended up quitting newman and then the day i quit uh because they were not giving me enough playing time and so the day i quit they called me back and then then after 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 i left the coach's office and i said like i quit it's like then they started loving me oh i had no idea you actually were like i'm done with this oh yeah no at one point i was like man i was because i was like because i was like i should be like getting more playing time this is like i was at one point i was i was a third leading scorer on the team Mm -hmm. right they wouldn't start me and i was only playing like 12 minutes a game but i was like third leading scorer and then the day that i got up to being the second leading scorer on the team they like cut my playing time really and i'm like i'm like and what where does that make sense where the nigga who's playing like the least minutes yeah. and now is your second leading scorer they cut my playing so you time start right getting when, a groove so, and yeah it, so I'm uh, like wow they're like looking at they must be looking at my stats and wow he's like getting up mm-hmm. so then I was like I went into their office we had a big like follow and I just told them the truth I'm like I'm, I, don't, I don't need to play basketball like, I'm cool so you wanted to completely be done with basketball or were you thinking about transferring yeah, I was to like, another I was, school I was, just, I was just like that was when I came up with the the thing. I was like, yo, you got to be able to give up all that you are for what you're willing to become. And I was like, of course. I'm going to play pro somewhere. But uh-huh. I was like, I don't need to like. Waste your time. Yeah, right? waste my it's time. So I was like, I was like, fuck it. And then they called me back. And then literally the, the day I quit, they called me back. And I came to practice. I had my best practice ever. And from then on, me and the coach, like, we're then best friends. And now cool. we call each other all the time. For it still to this day? Yeah. Coach Mark Potter. So how's he feel about your music? Is Loves he... it. I yeah. started off with poetry. Sometimes he hates when I cuss, but <laughs> he's, he's a dope guy. That's what I really learned in life, man. It's like, if you're like willing to give up all that you are for something, a lot of the times it works out. Like the one time, I, like, I wish I would have done that at Montana. I've been like, mm-hmm. like, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna let you niggas not play me because I should be playing. Mm-hmm. You know? or, or as soon as you're about to give up, there's like that thing that happens where there's that hope. Yeah. And you see exactly. like, <clears throat> so when you were there, what were you studying? Um, I was a communications major. Okay, so if basketball didn't work out, what were you thinking about? Nothing. I had no, literally. I was so scared because I was like, "Yo, I don't like anything else but basketball in life." Mm-hmm. I was like, "I have no other desire to do anything else." And I was, yeah. I was, I was waiting and like looking for something that was gonna like that you thought maybe you'd like. Yeah, and I was like, and I was like, because <clears throat> I knew I was gonna play pro regardless. But I was like, I was like, man, this basketball thing is getting like. It's like I work so hard at it, and it's like, damn, do I really want to run lines for the next ten, fifteen years overseas yeah. in fucking Lithuania? Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. Did you ever consider doing it? Because I, yeah, I, I have a couple of uh, friends that played college basketball that, you know, were good but not NBA good, and they yeah. ended up going and playing overseas. So exactly, is that something you consider? Yeah, I was, talk I, I was going to like I was. I always felt like I was gonna find my way to the NBA, but it was just gonna take me longer, mm-hmm. and I was gonna have to do the whole you know overseas stint. But like my, I led the league in scoring my senior year and all that dope shit. So I was killing. I was gonna sign with the agent, but like at that point, 
I had no desire to because I found poetry and started making music. And that's when the music... Do you think if the music didn't happen, you would end up doing it? Yes, yeah, I'd, I'd be playing pro right now if, if the music... If the, so I, I found poetry first. That was my junior year. Okay. And then... I knew. So prior to that, were you always into music because of sports? Nah, never did. Uh, I mean, I listened to music to get myself Yeah, that's what up. I mean. Like, oh, that's, yeah. how, that's how I started. Oh, yeah. It was because, you know, I was constantly looking for music to work out to that's when LimeWire and all those oh, things were out so I was heavy yeah. on that and then yeah. that's kind of what turned into me running the music website so yeah. <clears throat> you were always into hip hop um, and music but you didn't really get into it like making it anything until junior year in college yeah not even it was even more senior year was when I put up my first song but like so junior year um, so cause you know you know D1 they give you like the money and shit like that mm -hmm. I transferred to a small private catholic school new uh -huh. university i was on full scholarship but there was no like extra money mm -hmm. so i was like fuck i'm i don't want to be broke i still need to get haircuts and shit <laughs> i never i didn't have a car or nothing like that well they get, they don't give you any money for like uh rent or anything like that at newman yeah no. <clears throat> so you were like i was on campus like my school yeah I was my, like, my friend played at pitt and stuff and you know uh, he'd get a little check every once in a while i'm like yeah <laughs> must be nice uh, <laughs> no smaller schools don't get that yeah so that's when like <clears throat> i got the janitor job at first i told myself yo i'm not i don't need to work a job i'm gonna just like, why would I work a job when I just work on my game that's going to pay me later? Mm -hmm. Especially like, in college, because I, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's just like football, film, practice. Like, how would you even have time to so the, the, do that? So the the job was overnight. Yeah. So the job was from, uh, so I'd get out of practice, eat, do, 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 and have like a couple hours, and i work from like 8 till 12 or like 8 till 1. And I was, I was a janitor on <clears> campus, so it wasn't like super bad. So that's why you did it. Yeah, Plus the hours. Because yeah. I was wondering, I was like, you know, why'd you do Jan or stuff? Why, why didn't you go work somewhere else or yeah. do something? But no, I was, it was like, it was a dope. Like, I thought it was a great job. And honestly, when I started, I was like, yo, it's going to be a great story one day. Of like, course. and I was just like, like, this is great. You know what I, and it wasn't like super like, like they weren't on my ass. You know, I'm working in the building overnight. No you, one's really by in yourself? there. Or was I it, had my boss and like a couple other student workers sometimes. But it's quiet. Peaceful oh yeah. Night. <laughs> I just like, put my music in, just headphones. like stay on my social media, like just chill, like go hide out in a little spot somewhere, you know, they can't find how me. Much, how much uh, cleaning oh, and working do oh, you man. actually do? Cause I'm sure yeah. you're on your phone typing in lyrics yeah, out the time. Oh man. So like I probably, out of four hours, like during the week, I'd probably, if I went hard, I could get it done in 30 minutes. The cleaning. The cleaning. The cleaning so stuff. I used to like get in there and I'd be like, yo, I'm going hard. Like, so I just like bang it out super hard, like sweating. Yeah. Getting so all my shit done. Shit around, and focus was, yeah, on music stuff. Chill. And then during the summer, it was like eight hour shifts. So it was from like eight at night to like three in the morning. So you really didn't have a life after class and basketball. There wasn't Not, any hanging out or no, 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 doing anything no. with friends. There's no hanging out. That's crazy. So Except how do you get litty. Yeah. So how do you think sports has turned you into the person you are today? What's taught you? Uh, sports has <clears> definitely <throat> helped me because like, I remember like for me in basketball like, my basketball journey was such a good thing for me because I was like I played up when I was younger so I was mm -hmm. I've, I've been the best player on the team like the, the in mm -hmm. college like my senior I was the best player on the team and I've also been like the worst player on the team mm -hmm. you know and I've been the middle guy I've been like the guy who has to cheer I've been the motherfucker that motherfuckers gotta bring me water so it's like <laughs> I've, I've been through like all of those phases because some guys like they've always just been the star and then when they don't get that or their life doesn't show them that yeah. like later on they can't handle it I've so I was there. lucky to just have like all of those like and I was in like at Montana shit they used to like they thought I was a football player mm -hmm. you know they'd like I would go to get my shit to be like what number are you because I, cause I got no playing time at some points. Yeah. So it's like, motherfuckers didn't even know who I was. <laughs> you know? So it was like, I've been That's like, heartbreaking. Bro, too, you know? bro. I used to be like, damn, y'all niggas really going to disrespect me like this? Like. Yeah. The, like, cra the craziest thing I experienced. Um, so, you know, you have the big time recruits. I actually had to walk on. I decommitted from a school in my conference and I walked on. Wow. So me not being recruited, I, you know, I'm thrown under the bus to start yeah. off with. And I, I just remember, like, my redshirt freshman year, I did really well, but for some reason, there was not enough space on the field. For some reason, our coach did not want everyone on the field, so I went and busted my ass every day, was doing really well, making my way up, and there was about five or seven of us that on, the, on game day, we would have to be in the stands. Damn. And I remember someone from high school that I knew, they were like, aren't you on the team? Yeah. And like that just being so yeah, like, bro. terrible. Cause like, I'm not even on the sideline, but I'm like, you don't know what's going on during practice exactly. and stuff. So like me having to sit up there and just be like, yeah, damn, like I got to wait my time. And exactly. I mean, a lot of, I think sports is like one of the best things people can do. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like yep. team wise, just because, and also you really have to work your ass off to get what you want. Like, you can't skip practice and expect to play. So that's one yeah. of those things like 
that people just don't understand, like mentally tough, like just mentally from football tough. and everything, like whatever happens in my life, I feel like I can get through just because I've been You've through been all that it. bullshit yeah. and um, I know how to get through it. So, I mean, yeah. sports is an amazing thing and it's, Big. it's changed my life and I know Same, it has bro. for you. Um, I read someone on your Instagram about you um, taking a blow off class. For singing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... That was at Newman, right? That was at Newman. No, that, no, no, no. That was at University of Montana. Oh, that was at Montana. So, a lot of... It's, it's crazy to look back and be like, wow, like, I feel like I was, like, meant to do this. Because, like, a lot yeah. of things, like, fall back. So, at the University of Montana, at first I came in, I was studying economics. Mm-hmm. Right? So, studying economics, and I, I remember going to economics, and I'm like, I can't do this shit. Because mm-hmm. I, cause I, I used to fall asleep in, like, every class. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I'm like, because I hated school, but I just wanted to play basketball. But I still got great grades, but it was like that. So I'm like, one day we have this, we had this athlete class that all athletes were in. Some dude comes in and he's like, the single most important thing in the world is communication. He's like, every single thing, like, he's like, it's like, it's, he's like, it's, it literally will make or break your life. Either how good you communicate or fail to communicate will decide every single thing you do. I think that's the biggest thing. Cause you got kids that are geniuses, straight A's, but they, they can't get an interview because exactly. they can't talk to anyone. Me, I think when it comes to books, I'm dumb as a rock, but yeah. I can talk to people. I'm social. Exactly. That's another thing sports help with social. making friends. And exactly. <laughs> so, so like after that <laughs> fucking, after that little class, that hour class, I was like, you know, what the fuck am I doing in economics? Mm-hmm. I don't even like this shit. I sort of just chose it because it sounds good to my parents. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. My son's doing economics. <laughs> awesome. Nigerian parents, you know? So I'm just like, so, so literally like that day, I was like, I went to the girl at the student services. I'm like, yo, I'm switching to communications. So I switched to communication. So now I got to like pick different classes. Mm-hmm. So she, I'm like, what classes, like electives or whatever those classes are, like just like sort of like run yeah. down classes. That stuff's stressful, especially yeah. with how busy you are in school. Exactly. So I'm just like, yo, I want a class that's not like tough. So I remember one of them was food and culture. I'm like, fuck, okay, dope. So I, I just go <laughs> in that class and just stuff. pass out. I just go in that bitch and pass the fuck <laughs> out because I'm doing communications. So then I'm like, man, she's like, you need one more class. So I'm looking through the class. And I'm like, you know what? I've always sort of wanted to like sing and just like sort of be cool. And I could probably like get away in that class and just like chill, mm-hmm. you know? So she's like, yeah, she's like, she showed me it was there. I was like, okay, yeah, let me just take this singing class. And at that point I had never like sung or made a song or anything, mm-hmm. but I'm just like, cool. So I take the singing class and like, I remember just all, we always do like drills. Like, we do like drills oh, really? every day. I don't know any of the just, singing like, drills. We start off with that every day. Uh-huh. Like all these I'd drills. I'd be cool with going to that <laughs> class. <laughs> so I'm just like, and I remember like it got me out of my shell too. Cause we would have to like, like the final was singing in front of the class. Oh man, that'd be hard. Yeah, and I remember the night before my final, I fucking got drunk as fuck and my voice was, ch- I had to sing Somewhere Over a Rainbow. That really? was my final song, bro. <laughs> so I did that shit oh, in that man. class and now I look back, I'm like, wow, that class really helped. So I took that communications major. And just Obviously now I, I communicate, hell, that's probably like my best thing, just yeah. communicating to people, so. There's no way I could have did that. Yeah, it's like, tough. <clears throat> I'm worried about things, like I'm real social play a football game in front of 10,000 people when it comes to public speaking. Like, yeah. those classes in college, I mean, there's 10 kids in the class and I'd have to sit there. I just, I get so nervous. So, like, singing. <laughs> yeah. No, I, get, I was definitely nervous. But it was just like, so, were you good at public speaking and doing all that stuff? Like, you always had that? I mean, to, part? I'm, I'm good. You know, it's like to the, to most people, like, on look, it's like, yeah, he's, he's dope at that. I mean, I'm nervous as shit usually. When I'm good, but mm-hmm. I, I would say I'm pretty good, yeah. Yeah. That's good to have. So, when did, um, you really start recording like how did that because you did the poem your friends or your teammates liked it but when did you really like sit down or how did you even do it did you have a mic so um have a friend that had stuff like how did you even so what happened was i, th- I remember it now so i remember i calling my manager name we were like he was like oh we got to turn this into music eventually i'm like cool so but i wasn't really like pushing to do it mm-hmm. and then i remember i had this friend named addy he was um, Nigerian. He's like a, he was like, he was like a bigger YouTuber than me at the time. Like yeah. I had a couple like Addy, uh, Jay. They were like guys who were bigger than me, but they were like they were like they're like oh this, this nigga's talented as shit. So he's like yo bro, you should try to remix like popular songs. Mm-hmm. I'm like ah, I don't really know. So I tried it one time and I remixed fucking Drake's uh, Drake's One Dance mm-hmm. with Rihanna. So I remember going to the studio the first time. Went to some trash studio in Wichita, Kansas. Recorded it in like one take. And then I made a music video with Thad, and Thad was like, he like makes all my music videos. Mm-hmm. And I met him in Kansas too. He was like 17 when I DM'd, uh, messaged him on Facebook. So none of these people were at school with you? They were just local area, or you knew over the internet? Yeah, they, the, the two guys were on the internet, and then Thad, well, he went to high school in Wichita, Kansas, where I was at. It's funny how that all works out. Yeah. So, so then I recorded that one dance. We shot the music video in like some parking garage, put it up, didn't do that great. Mm-hmm. Left that there, put up a couple other like 
other like poem poetry mm-hmm. shit. And then I made the Hilly Clinton, the designer remix. Mm-hmm. Like first I made it in front of like where I usually did my poetry videos. And then I put it on Instagram, like it went it went viral. I, was, I messaged, like I spent like three days messaging like thousands of kids to DM world star funny blacks and designer. And then yeah. like on the third day, all three of those accounts posted it and wow. it went dumb viral. And then I made the, and then literally when it went viral, I told that, I'm like, yo bro, this shit went viral. Listen, we need to make a music video ASAP. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I skipped practice. He skipped school. I just told him I had to go to <clears throat> do like stuff for my immigration because I'm from. So whenever I needed to oh, get out of so class, get I just be like, "Yo, yeah, I got immigration shit to do, Canada." Because you know, coaches aren't cool. Yeah, they don't. They don't <laughs> see, practice. Yeah, so. but they didn't know like, okay, oh shit, you just got to do immigration. You can't get deported. You yeah, know what you I mean? So, that. so I was like, bet. So skip practice, made the music video, and then that went viral in like a month or two months of pushing it. Got a couple million views, gained subscribers. Wow. So that's that's when like you knew it was. It could happen like that gave you the confident boost like okay, yeah yeah i was I'm like really gonna do this well i mean as soon, as soon as i wrote my first poem i was like yo this is what i'm gonna do like something with this i was like i'm either gonna do poetry or motivational speaking for the rest of my life because so how just can travel. you do poetry like how can you make a career out of that so my idea was- like I, I had this idea in my mind i was like okay i'm gonna be the drake of spoken word poetry because mm-hmm. i was like yo I, I listen to all these niggas do spoken word poems like my shit's doper than theirs and i rhyme my shit so I was basically rapping, you yeah. know, but like in poems. So I was like, and so I, at first I was like, I, like we made, I still have, I have like 10 music videos that are poetry music videos that I haven't put out because I was like, yeah, I want to like make music videos, but for poetry. Mm-hmm. So I made like hella of those I'm going to put out later on, but that's like what I was basically doing. And then like motivational speaking type shit. So have you done motivational speaking? Yeah. Really? I remember my first, I went to Cape and Mount Carmel with coach Potter, the guy okay. that the coach I'm close with now. And like, I, I spoke in front of all the, all the student athletes motivate them that's cool yeah so you could do that too i mean yeah <laughs> so many so yeah. many things you could do i thought it was so cool how your coach uh supported you with the music too yeah like how you did the music video with all your teammates oh yeah and uh, i was lit and he was in it like mm, did the school show mm. any love like yeah besides yeah, they, that they, they, like, they're the one who asked me to do it newman, really newman was really supportive of me man they and they like for example they would play that song during like homecoming and during like before the games uh-huh. and then they were showing the music video all over campus on all the TVs. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so you did the um, Drake and Hillary Clinton thing and then start getting traction. So then they asked you to do something with the team. Yeah. Like, that how the time yeah, was? That, yeah. That came on, was that my senior year or my junior year? That was my senior year. Yeah. So yeah, they asked me like the next year to do something. That's cool. For homecoming. Did you perform for Homecoming or just for the video? No, just like the, we made the music video, all my teammates cool, and stuff were in it. Yeah, that would have been, been real dope. cool. Um, so how'd your parents take all this? Oh, they're cool. They love it now. They're always, they're, they're always like the people like, you know, that start to like skeptical because, you know, they want mm-hmm. like shit to work out for their kid. But then once they see it going well, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. I also feel like it's different for them just because they came from Nigeria. Like, yeah. you know, if, if I was like, all right, I'm going to do music, it'd be different for my parents just because... They've been here their whole life. Like, yeah. you know, like they kind of understand that stuff. But I feel like for your parents, it's like you have to get a good job. Like how oh, long yeah. have they, how long were they over here before you were born? Like, were they Shit. here for a while? Nah, they were here maybe six because my sister, they were here like six years before I was born because my sister, we're all three years apart. So there's me, then my older sister, Andrew, three years over and then Rasheen, who's three. So yeah, six years. Wow, so did Before they adjust born. well? Like, what, oh, yeah, they, they, what did they, they come over here and do? So my dad, my dad's an engineer. Oh, wow. So um, he got a scholarship from a, from Nigeria, a Commonwealth scholarship to come here. They like flew us all out or whoever it was, just him and my mom at that time, to Newfoundland. And that's where I was born. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty crazy. It's crazy, yeah. It's the man wow. right there. So what did, what did you do in the, uh, back to Jan or stuff, I have a note here. You used to perform? Oh I'll yeah, I used to like, stuff. I used to always like just like perform in the mirror and stuff. Just, you know, just like getting it. Just anyone catch you? Out. Oh yeah, sometimes <laughs> people would walk in because I have my headphones in. Like I might even be in like the girls' bathroom cleaning the shit. You know, with I mean? a microphone? No, with a microphone. Just like <laughs> just with my hand. You know, just like this. At first, I remember I was I always started off with the shit in my left, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna keep it in my right so I can like use my dominant hand to like really make my sign. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> just like things like that, I would like learn in the mirror. Yeah. I'm like, this hand doesn't really move uh, like yeah. that. So you I'm, like, see how you look? Yeah. And look. I, I, that's so funny. I like yeah. how you post uh, stuff on Instagram. Like, uh, how do you title it? Like, story? story oh, story the, time? The story yeah. time. I was going through it. I was like, damn, there's some good shit in there. Yeah. I was like, I really like that. Um, so back to motivational speaking. Have you ever thought about um, coaching? Like, at nah, all? I'm not. See, I can't. The reason, this is why, this is why I can't, like, coach. Because it's like, 
even now when I go play these pickup games, I'm like, I look at these kids and I'm like, yo, you have no idea how hard I worked to just did like to even because I wasn't a basketball player. I made myself one. Okay. So I'll be looking at some of these kids and just like even like I go play these little like games because like, I don't I don't really try anymore. I don't go hard because I'm not I'm a music artist. And I'm not going to go out here fucking yeah, just most of those get my guys stand. at 24 hour didn't play college. So yeah, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 and it's just like I just I, I don't have patience for like um just for like mediocrity or someone who's like stuck in it. Like I'm like if you're like for yeah. me, like if you're on my team and you're playing basketball and you're not trying to like. You know, <laughs> be with it. Like, it's just like, I can't respect you uh -huh. because it's like, I try to tell, tell people all the time. It's like, yo, if you're going to play basketball, so many, so many more do doors open up when you put out, when you put your heart into something. Oh, of course. Cause it's like, cause people a see that. And I truly believe like God rewards people who like go hundred mm -hmm. percent. Cause like from, from my music came out of me giving everything to basketball. And like, I don't know if music, I, I mean, I, I, like, I, I know music's what I'm meant to do, but like, I know if something else happens, the fact that I'm putting like my whole heart into the music now, mm -hmm. like people are seeing that. So I can now, I can do whatever I want to because they know, wow, this guy goes hard at whatever he does. Mm -hmm. So it's like, people don't understand, like when someone's watching you on the court, it's like, it's, it's a job interview. Yeah. Like damn near. Like, <laughs> it's like, yo, know, there could be a millionaire in the stands and be like, wow, this motherfucker just doesn't go hard. Probably, I mean, that's probably how it is. If when I, I show him. up to a pickup game, what's the first? You see the meme yeah. with the, the little kid tying his shoes. How yeah. you show up to play basketball? It's like yeah. you go there, you you watch everyone. It's it's like an interview. Yeah. Uh, he's good. He's not. He's good. Exactly. He's lazy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so that's, that's exactly. why. That's why. That's why I can't. I can't see myself getting into coaching because I just I wouldn't be able to put up with yeah. kids just not. You know, it's just. Yeah. So that, that's that was kind of one of my things with with the receiver school thing I was telling you about because. My wife, she's like, you know what? Why don't you try coaching? Because I'm lost in like what I want to do exactly. Because yeah. when I, from high school, I was like you with sports. Like sports was my whole life. Like I was always the best kid on all my teams. And I was like, I'm going to either the NBA, NFL. So, and you know, when I got to like sophomore year, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not good enough, but I can play college. But it was like, you know, like that's everything. Like I'd wake up, go on YouTube watch Team Flight Brothers, How to Boom. Dunk. Yeah. And then I'd try and imitate it. Like, yeah. I, did, I don't think I read a book or studied anything yeah. from fourth grade to eighth grade. It was like sports, 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 sports. So when it came to that time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. Like, I had no idea. And then I got into college and um, I started my first music website and my uh, best friend's uncle is a graphic designer. He's like, I see a little creative side of him. Maybe you should do that. And I was like, Fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to school. I, you know, football starts in August. I got to pick something. I guess I'm doing that. Yeah. And I stuck with it. And then, so now I'm trying to figure it out. And I was like, you know, maybe I could do something with coaching, but I, I don't want to coach because, like, I played college football and those guys are there from six in the morning to oh, 10 yeah. at night watching film. So I'm like, maybe I can do something with coaching, but it's not full time with, yeah. so like, training kids and training stuff. Training kids, yeah. So, like, that's another thing with that. I was like, you know, like, if they can't do what I could have done, like it's frustrating. Like you want them to be able to do stuff yeah. you can do, and like yeah. trying to teach them. Like, so I don't know if it's I could be coaching yeah. either. You know, <laughs> even now, just my DMs are flooded with just like, because I'm I'm a tough love type dude. Like, mm -hmm. like a lot of people like will seem like, oh, he's probably gonna be super nice. I'm like, no. Nah, if, if a kid like hits me up in the DM like this, that, I'm like, bro, Google that shit. Like that's what I did. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's not like like it's too many babies. You know, oh, I, have, I hate that shit. I get that all the time. I, with my receiver school, I get messages. Hey, uh, you have any drills you could suggest to me? And I'm like, Fuck. I'm like, dude, there's, I'm like, there's a million drills. Like, I, what do you shit, want me to yeah. tell you? Like, I, you know, you follow the page for a reason. I post yeah. drills. Like, yeah. so I know exactly what you're saying. Like yeah. people trying to just get handouts. It's like, yeah. do your research. Like I'm giving you stuff. Just figure it out. You yeah. Know? Really people are lazy. Um, so Tupac, he is my okay. favorite artist of all time. Obviously huge influence for you. If he was sitting here right now, what is one song of yours that you would show him? If I was, if I was going to show him one song of mine? <clears throat> yeah, if he never heard you, he's sitting here and I'd never show, heard I'd, I'd show him Did It First. It's not out yet, but I'd show him Did that's It First. Did it first None of your remixes to any of this stuff? No, probably not. No, that's your... I'd, that figure, your, I'd, I'd figure you'd stumble on him. Is that your favorite one? You're all... Like, I think... I think I th so I think my, I think my song Self-Proclaimed and Did It First are two of the best rap songs ever made, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Otherwise, I'd show him one of those... It's one of those ones. Or I'd show him, I would show him probably hit him up. That one too is fire. The remix. Yeah. Yeah. He would love that. Yeah, he would love that. I think he'd love that. 
I was thinking when I first came across your music, I was like, that's ballsy him doing a two oh, yeah. remix and putting See, out. when I first made it, I was like, it didn't seem ball. Because here's my no, thing. I was never into music. See, me being a blogger, that's... Because uh, okay. I've seen people put out remixes. Oh, uh, really? You know, if you remix a you know, Drake or something, it's not as big as a deal, big of a deal. But if you remix Biggie, Tupac, if people have passed away, if you jump on their song and put it out, yeah. like it's got to be good or else oh, you're yeah. just going to get destroyed. So when yeah. I first saw that, I was like, no way he did this. Wow. That clicked on. See, I, was I like, did not I was think like, of it like that. Yeah, it's it's like that. People yeah. think that. <laughs> it ended up working out for you. Oh, yeah. My, cause I'm, I'm, <laughs> see, I, my thing is, like, I hope everybody else, I'm, I'm an oblivious dude. I'm just like, I don't care. Like, you know, I'm just doing it. You know what I mean? No, I, don't, I don't even know how I did that that day. Like, I remember, like, the whole, like, he came in a dream a couple times, and I was just like, yeah, chilling. And, I've, and then I was just like, hmm. I think I, I Googled it, hit him up in Shimano, and I was just like, man, let me just make this fucking remix. And we shot a one take. Literally, mm-hmm. I wrote that that day, uh, and, like, a little bit, went to the studio, called up Horace, recorded it, and then told that, bro, can we just go to the train track and shoot a fucking one take, please? So then I recorded it. Because <laughs> I used to be on Thad's ass. I'm like, bro, yeah. we need to do this now, today. Boom, boom, That's boom, good, boom. though. Yeah. That's good, though. A lot of artists and are then like, I just posted it. When we were in LA filming the music video for my single I Want. And I remember I was just like, yo, I'm just gonna post this. Yeah. And like, I'm not even gonna like advertise it. I'm just gonna post it. Cause I, w- I had no service in the Ramada Inn we were in, like down in like Burbank. Okay. I had no service. I'm like, fuck it, let me just get this little hot spot for you and post it. So I posted <laughs> it. And then we're filming the music. I come back, I'm like, wow, shit's already at 70,000 views. Wow. I'm like, fuck, dope. Yes, I mean, especially yeah. if you put, you know, Tupac remix. Yeah, oh, yeah, know, yeah that was boy. Hell yeah. So the, uh, the I Want video i i watched the behind the scenes you've never been to the beach until no it's my first time on the beach really yeah I don't, were, I don't swim so and how old were you at the time 22 23 that was last summer so 23 first time on the beach that's crazy yeah so how many times have you been to la before you moved out here that was my first time really well for basketball actually no la was my first time since i moved out here but like when i found that music video for that week we were here mm-hmm. that was my first time ever in la that was another thing. How did how did that transition happen? Like, you were in college dorm room, like, cause you just graduated. Like, how did yeah. you make the move out here? Like, what? You just were like, I'm going to LA. Yeah. I so my, cause up. I live with my manager, and we were like, Yeah, you're gonna, you know, you, you got to move to LA, bro. You got to move to LA. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, Okay, fuck it, move to LA. So that's I was crazy. like, Here we go. What'd your parents think about that? That's the thing. That's the thing like, with a dude like with a dude like me. People they know they have no choice. It's just really? like you're just. Like, I don't, like most of the time, I won't even tell them until it's done. Really? Yeah, I'm just like, cause I like I I, I like I don't I don't care like if you're gonna say mm-hmm. no or da da da, cause it's gonna happen. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just like <laughs> I told them I'm is. moving to LA. Yeah, it is what it is. That was tough for me. That was really, really? tough. Yeah, cause when when did you move out? December. That was when I came out. Or actually, yeah, December. That's when I moved Crazy. out. I got a job offer. Was never anywhere yeah, west. Yeah, you got more like, you know, you got, you got your daughter, you got your wife, so yeah, it's, like, was, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. I was not scared, but it was it was uh, nerve-wracking because, yeah. I mean, I was never anywhere west of Ohio <clears throat> wow. until then. Like, I, you know, I, I never really traveled. My wife's family, that she traveled everywhere growing up. So, me, I was always in Pittsburgh, never left, never really did anything. And uh, I, was at a, I was at a company working a job, doing well, and then they just started laying a bunch of people off. So, I lost my job. And her family moved to South Carolina. So at that point, we didn't have both of our families there. So I was like, damn, like, what are we going to do? Like, yeah. I'm not trying to move in with your family. I'm not trying to move in with mine. Yeah. So I was like, I was so happy I got laid off because, I, I mean, I, I hated the job so much. So I was like, you know, I'm trying to go to New York, L.A. You know, it's a two-year time frame before she starts school, like, to chase my dreams, do what I want. And I applied to jobs in L.A., New York. And it was funny. I, I would get people call me on the phone but as soon as they see on your resume you're in pittsburgh or any other state they don't want you even if you're willing to relocate wow so i was like you know what am i gonna do so i was like fuck it i went wherever i was applying to on zillow or on uh, indeed i would go on zillow so if i was applying for a job in calabasas i'd go on zillow type in calabasas copy and paste the first address put on my resume to make it look like i live there damn so i then i'd apply for the job i got an email for my now company in Calabasas they were like hey can you come for an interview and I'm like damn what do I do like I'm kind of nervous like I, I don't like to fly and I was like I'm just gonna do it so I called my fr- uh, high school friend it's at UCLA I was like hey can I come out and do this interview he's like yeah I was like I'm gonna crash on your couch for a week a flew week out, damn. flew out by myself and usually when you do an interview they're like okay well we got some other people we're interviewing we'll call you in a week two weeks month you know how that yeah. works so I'm like I'm gonna go do the interview 
if they want me, I'll still be back in Pittsburgh. I can always decline. So I go out, do the interview, and he's my, my now boss is like, I've never done this before, but um, I can't let you leave. I'm, I'm going to hire you on the spot. And I was just like, Wow. Like, I didn't plan on it. So I'm wow. like, So I'm like, I'm like, I, I froze. I'm like, uh, okay. And he's like, When can you start? Because the whole interview, I'm like, I can start immediately. I can start immediately. Because I needed, I wanted a job. Job, yeah. And he's you can start like, immediately. Yeah. I can start immediately. Yeah, I said that. And he's like, He's like, can you start tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, well, uh, well um, I'm actually just out here for a week. Uh, I got to go back to Pittsburgh, grab my stuff, blah, blah, blah. He's like, he's like, okay, okay. He's like, I love it. I he's love like, it. <laughs> he's like, I love, I love it. it. I love it. I'm like, all right, cool. He's like, you play on it. So, so That's I, crazy. I, I leave and I, I call my, my parents. I call my wife. I'm like, he just offered me the job. Like, I don't know what to do because... I was talking about, but I wasn't really like about that yeah, life. Yeah, you know, like I, life, I, it yeah, sounded yeah. good, but it, the, it really put the pressure. So I went back home. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So he called me. He's like, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm like, good. Just trying to figure it out. He's like, he's like, to make it easier on you, I'll give you an extra two thousand on your salary. And I was like, Wow. Like no one does that. Like, yeah. I was like, I worked at a job for a year and a half, and this guy has already done more for me. In this little, and I didn't yeah. even start working for him. And he's like, you plan on having Thanksgiving with your family? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, cool. Enjoy Thanksgiving with your family. Start the following Monday. So I was like, all right. And then I moved I moved out here, stayed with my friend for a whole month. Every weekend, I'd go and look at apartments, FaceTime my girl and everything. And then I ended up moving them out here. So it was like, wow. that was my crazy thing. So, wow. So, so I, I, feel the, story, I, feel the, I feel the move. And yeah, that's a story. It kind of, so that was... It's crazy making move. I love it out here. I don't know about you, but it, it's I love it. it's incredible. No winters, anything oh, like dude. that. I fucking love it. Yeah. Wow. What are some of your favorite places? Like, what do you like to do around here? Man, I don't do shit. You know? I really don't. You don't do like to shit. go hike or anything? Hike. I, listen, I don't like that either until I came out here. <laughs> really? Like um, Runyon Canyon, all them places. Like, oh, man, I'm a listen. simple ass dude. <laughs> nah. I'm not doing shit. I'm just I'm, I'm I go to the gym, Hooping work out. Too. Hoop, and then go to the studio and then try to like, make the shit boom. Yeah, that's, it, that's all. You can't waste your time hiking. You got <laughs> no, hiking could be low key dope though. I just I never. Really it's just the of views. It. It's, it's yeah. incredible. Me being from Pittsburgh and not ever seeing anything like that when I came yeah. out here, I was just wow. I was blown away with the stuff I was like, seeing. Yeah, I need to start. Maybe though. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have a girl to do that type of shit with. Yeah, <laughs> I'll send you some locations. Yeah. Uh, what are some future <laughs> plans you got? Um, got the project dropping. Um, so that's a big thing, really trying to really going to take this to the next level and just become one of the biggest artists. So right now I got, you know, some dope features coming out, OT and Futuristic. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did the Hobson one. Um, so that was dope. Planning some tours, mm -hmm. um, going back to China um, and really just like just cementing myself in this music industry. You know what I mean? It, it, I, I just really feel like there's no other artist, you know, and a lot of people say that a mm. lot of people they will be like, Oh, you know, I'm the best. And da, 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 da. I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm just saying like, there's no other artist like who does what I do. You know what I mean? I really think like, it's just, I think there's a need for me in the music industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like I can't be replicated. I can't be duplicated. You know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of artists where it's Little like things that separate you. you think, exactly. From other people. There's a lot of artists who I feel like who are just, they're just sort of, I feel like I'm a generational artist and mm -hmm. more, more than that, a generational person. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel like there's a lot of motherfuckers who can like do what I do with their mouth and motivate people and do all that shit. So I feel like I'm a generational person. Change people's lives. Exactly. That's, so that's why I'm really reason. like, just, just like, I know I'm going to be there. I'm just like, I'm trying to speed up the process. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. at the beginning. You're so yeah. early. On. I know. You know that's what pisses me off. Cause I'm like, yo, I, you know, and all that's what's crazy out in LA. All it takes is like one. You know, one person being like, you know what, man, this kid's fucking mm -hmm. special. Especially now you're in LA. Yeah. Endless connections. I mean, you yeah. can drive to anyone's house. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. so. Let's, get, let's talk about the EP, though. So, seven tracks. What are some of your favorite songs? Or, I guess, where are the top two favorite songs of yours that people should look for when it comes out? Because uh, this will be out, this interview will be out before then. So, dope. when people watch, what are some songs that they should look out for that are your favorite? Obviously, you love them all, but. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, Man, I love man. Cracking on my own's a banger. Mm -hmm. People are gonna love that song, it's a banger. And then, honestly, I really like I really like the No Respect with Futuristic song. Mm -hmm. I think that one is like an anthem for people because like a lot of I like my biggest thing. I hate being disrespected. You know what I mean? But it motivates me, so sometimes I don't mind being disrespected because I know it's gonna result in something good. 
But no respect. People definitely got to look out for that one and crack it on my own. So those are the top two. Um, the name of the EP. I, I can get the meaning of it, what I think. But what's your what's your definition or meaning of the EP? Uh, it's different now. It just means like a lot of stuff has changed. You know, I remember just in December, you know, being in which like I, so I've lived in three different states. This is my fourth state since I've been in America. I've lived in like three of the smallest states, Wyoming, Montana, and Kansas. And then now to be like in LA where it's like the population of just LA is like bigger than all three of those like states, you know? So it's like, it's like everything is like different now, you know, no longer a janitor. Mm-hmm. Got a car now, you know, I mean, LA is just like, sometimes I look back and I'm like, damn, we've done a lot in the short period of time. So it's just a lot of shit's changed. That's what it means yeah. to me. That, that was where I, what I thought the meaning of it, but I wanted to get that. Um, with Hobson, how did that, how did you develop that relationship with him? Like, how did that come about? Did you just reach um, out? And just- I think, uh, so I'm with, like, this YouTube company called CMG, and I think they had to connect somewhere to, like, mm-hmm. someone that, knew, like, I think it was his, his manager or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we hit him up, and then, um, yeah, he was like, yeah, my fans, because my fans have, had always, like, hit up Hobson, like, DM'd him, Tech like, crazy, cool. yeah. So he was like, oh, yeah, man, I've been seeing your shit since October. Your fans really? have been, like, yeah, your fans have really been, like, tagging me and shit and DMing me that we should collab, so it just made sense. That's cool how that worked out. Yeah. Did you see the uh, Anthony Fantano thing? Oh, yeah. That shit was funny as shit. <clears throat> I didn't see that till last night. I decided to put that in here because oh, really? just in line. Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe he did that. Just Yeah, like, I was like, damn. <laughs> like, I, think, I, think it was, I think it was out of something him and Hobson have ongoing oh, like, really? from the past. You just got Because I think he's reacted it. to Hobson videos in the past. Yeah, he kind of hates that, um, that type of rap like that. Yeah. Like, uh, like the, just the lyrics and everything. Like yeah. He kind of has like a thing for so, it. I, feel like. I thought it was dope. I enjoyed the exposure. <laughs> I was going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were going to watch. Um, and the You're Worth It. So how did that, how'd that come about? Like what made you, like where were you um, at when you were just like, I'm just going to come up with this. Like let's do this. Uh, so I would always like thought of an idea to like figure out a way to like mass, you know, spread something. I was like, my, my whole goal has always been to put something into the world that lasts forever. So, um, I remember seeing Vinny told me about, um, these people who wrote on stamped money and like, I had had the idea of, of like writing on money back in Kansas. Cause like, yo, how can I just get my name out there? Like crazy. Why don't, uh, yeah, why don't I just your, fucking write my IG and get put your sound to write, Yeah. I'm fucking on all my, like, you know, what? nah, it's not a good cause. So then when he like told me about that, I like revisited that plan. I was like, wow. Okay. So I could put, you know, this website on these bills and it's for a good cause. So fuck it. Now I'm just yeah. do it. So I just started getting hella kids to write on these bills. And I think like, so like, I mean, like right now the website's at like 40,000 something views. So that's wow. good. You know? So, and I, th- I think it's something like as I grow, that movement's going to grow. And it's, and I, I like it. I'll, I'll never make a song like that again mm-hmm. with a whole movement. That's why I like your worth it.org because it's a song that will last forever. Mm-hmm. As long as like I keep, I keep writing on money and people keep writing on money, mm-hmm. you know? So it's not like it takes that much time out of your day. You know what a, I mean? It's just like a side thing. That's the crazy thing. Changing people's lives. Yeah. That's you know, crazy that's, thing. it's such a good thing to do, especially with you. Yeah, you know, with your music, how you want to be motivational. You yeah, know, and that that shit just, that shit just triggers something to me. It's like, you know, a lot of people have like the concept of time so messed up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like there's really so much. Like sometimes I'll be like, a lot of kids with me. Oh man, I can't. I'm like, bro, to write on your fucking bill takes like eight seconds. <laughs> Literally. You know what I mean? And it's just like that's the difference between like people ask me like, bro, how the fuck did you, you know? do this in such a short period of time like bro because it's just like i'll just sit down and message a thousand kids to share this yeah. shit it's like it's not it's that a good hard. cause too so people yeah. sh- you know if you have a heart yeah it's it's <laughs> not it's, it's not that hard to make good shit blow up it you really just you, you just you just you just it sounds hard but it's like okay hey, well if i if i message a thousand kids let's say i message a thousand or two thousand kids and i get them to share a video let's say out of two thousand maybe 200 share it that's not bad I'll say I keep doing that, you know, for a while. That's what I did with, like, when I first started. Like, Hillary Clinton blew up because I messaged so many kids to fucking hit up world star designer and them. It's like, bro, they're going to see this shit eventually. Yeah. And if they now, if they see it and they choose not to post it, well, okay, well, that's a whole other story. But it's like, this shit's going to blow eventually. Of course. Just time. It's crazy journey. Yeah, man. Well, hey, that's all I got for you. I appreciate it. Um, for people watching, it's different now. August 22nd. If you're in LA listening party, August 21st, 21st. correct? Yep. And uh, look out for new music. Follow at, uh, at that Dax. That's, that's Dax. Dax. Yep. Follow that uh, with the motivational speaker. You have any gems you want to end us with? 
for anyone watching oh yeah man your boy Dex always got <laughs> gems um, my, my biggest gem is this a lot of the stuff that I've acquired or like what I've done even though the scale might not be huge yet but it's like basically just off of you know having conversations with people and I feel like a lot of people like underestimate the power of one person it's like you never know who you're talking to mm -hmm. you know what I mean you don't know where word travels so it's like it's always like it's always like really important that when you meet people, whether it's for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, like you really impose your energy on that person because you never know who they're going to tell. And that's how like like me going to China was off a of DM. Like a lot of the, a lot of the shit that I do and have gone have been off just of like answering a DM. Right. Yeah. So it's like never like underestimate who you're talking to is what I say. Incredible. Yeah. Well, you heard it. Thank you for watching. Peace. Just dope. Bro.